Hey what's up guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Ray taking over the voiceover for the video since Jax's throat is sore. Anyways, today's video is going to be comparing two events created by the 13th Floor Entertainment Group, Shacktoberfest and The Haunted Hayride. This is our first time going to both events and this video is going to give you an honest look so you can decide where you want to go this Halloween. So let's get started. We first went to Shacktoberfest on Friday the 13th, and we arrived 30 minutes before it started. The line was quite short. Once it opened, we walked through a giant blow-up shack. The jack o lantern <laughs> After that, you enter the first scare zone, Shipwreck Graveyard. If you're feeling brave, you can investigate the mysterious storm that caused the ships to run aground. Then we went to our first maze, Dead Man's Wharf. Escape the reaching tentacles of large sea creatures who have made their way onto the wharf shore as you navigate the storm through a maze of rusted vessels and withering cargo shrouded in fog. Even if you manage to escape the fog's grip, you might find yourself surrounded by dangerous, undead, seafaring creatures surfacing from their watery graves. Next, we went to another sea-themed maze, Pirate's Cove. Step aboard Deep Sea Davies pirate ship and make your way through the dark, narrow passageways as you search for your own piece of the treasure. After that, we made our way to Midway Madness, which included a maze and a fair. Loopy Loopy and her loyal clown crew have taken over the carnival and turned the fun house into the fear house. Between the giant ferris wheel, bumper cars, and concessions, make sure you look up, look down, you never know where you might spy a creepy clown. Sorry, that's my bad eye. The next maze was located inside the Queen Mary, making it extra creepy. This was the new maze for this year, the Grey Ghost. After being permanently docked in Long Beach in 1967, she became a hotel and tourist attraction until 2020, where she sat vacant for three years, allowing the spirits of those who perished on board to become louder and stronger than ever. We really liked the beginning of this one, but then, when we got to the World War II part, it felt very empty. Lastly was our favorite maze, Diesel's Pumpkin Patch. This one-of-a-kind walkthrough experience features a traditional hay bale maze, mixed with larger-than-life inflatables and animations.
Lastly, in the middle of the event was a large scare zone with Lovecraft as the DJ. We even got a picture with Frankenshack. Overall, we really enjoyed this event. If you arrive when the event first opens, you beat the crowd and can get everything done very quickly. Also, Jax is a huge fan of animatronics, so they really liked all of the unique ones the events had. The mazes were quite dark and a bit empty, scare actor wise. But for only the event's second year, we thought it was pretty fun and a very unique haunt experience compared to the major theme parks. Now, onto the Haunted Hayride. After being misled onto the wrong tram, sitting through an hour of traffic just to get to the Hollywood Bowl, and paying $18 to Uber back, we finally made it. After letting the staff know, they were super sweet and allowed us to bypass the line for the new Goosebumps maze, which was only open for that weekend, and is the reason we came in the first place. Based on the new Disney Plus show, strange things lurk around every corner, following the mysterious death of high school teen Harold Biddle. After that maze, we went on the Haunted Hayride, which was our personal favorite because of how unique it felt. It also reminded Jax of Ghost Train, which she misses greatly. Within the foothills of Midnight Falls, the leaves turn brown, and the veils between the living and the dead is at its thinnest. The Witch of the Woods has casted her spell to summon the spirits of the underworld to cross over and assimilate into form. Next was Midnight Mortuary. Once a beacon of rest and peace, the mortuary has ignited its darkest chambers to show guests a different kind of afterlife. More footage for my found documentary, wonderful. Lastly was the newest maze, Hellbilly Halloween, ventured deep into the backwoods of Midnight Falls, where a long rumored cannibalistic family has taken in the spirit of Halloween by dishing out diabolical tricks filled with horrifying treats. Putting the horrendous commute aside, the event felt very lackluster, especially for its 15th anniversary. The mazes were very empty and dark, with very few animatronics, 
Even the ones they did have looked very old and in need of some TLC. We kind of expected more for a momentous occasion, especially since the staff, scare actors, and the entrance displays were top notch. They should also move locations as it feels cramped and with many people running and walking, the dirt flies up and really messes with your lungs. This is just our personal experience and yours can be completely different. I'm pretty sure it's obvious what we preferred from the two. The jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> the chocolate ice. <laughs> but in all honesty, you should check out both of these events and form your own opinion. However, the real moral of the story is bring back those drinks. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye.